a seemingly ordinary sunspot appeared on the eastern edge of the sun. Initially, it seemed unremarkable, just one of the many sunspots that appear and fade away. However, over the days, this particular sunspot grew at an extraordinary rate, swelling to a size 17 times larger than Earth. Scientists named it Active Region 3364, and it quickly lived up to its title. This massive sunspot unleashed powerful solar flares, some so intense that they triggered coronal mass ejections, CMEs, directed at Earth. The outcome was one of the most stunning auroral displays ever recorded, with vibrant lights illuminating skies in regions where they had never been seen before. NASA declared this the most powerful geomagnetic storm in 500 years, with its effects even reaching deep underground observatories. The sun is on the verge of a significant event, a magnetic field reversal. This phenomenon happens roughly every 11 years and marks an important stage in the solar cycle. The shift in polarity indicates the halfway point of solar maximum, the height of solar activity, and the beginning of the shift toward solar minimum. The last time the sun's magnetic field flipped was toward the end of 2013. But what causes this switch in polarity, and is it dangerous? Let's take a deep look at the sun's magnetic field reversal and investigate the effects it could have on Earth. In a teleconference with reporters on Tuesday, Representatives from NASA, the National Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration, NOA, and the International Solar Cycle Prediction Panel announced that the sun has reached its solar maximum period, which could continue for the next year. The solar cycle is a natural cycle the sun goes through as it transitions between low and high magnetic activity. Roughly every 11 years at the height of the solar cycle, the sun's magnetic poles flip. On Earth, that'd be like the north and south poles swapping places every decade. And the sun transitions from being calm to an active and stormy state. To understand the magnetic field's reversal, first, it's important to be familiar with the solar cycle. This approximately 11-year cycle of solar activity is driven by the sun's magnetic field and is indicated by the frequency and intensity of sunspots visible on the surface. The height of solar activity during a given solar cycle is known as solar maximum, and current estimates predict it will occur between late 2024 and early 2026. But there is another very important, albeit lesser known, cycle that encapsulates two 11-year solar cycles. Known as the Hale Cycle, this magnetic cycle lasts approximately 22 years through which the sun's magnetic field reverses and then reverts to its original state. Ryan French, a solar astrophysicist and Space.com contributing writer, told Space.com. During solar minimum, the sun's magnetic field is close to a dipole with one north pole and one south pole, similar to Earth's magnetic field. But as we shift towards solar maximum, the sun's magnetic field becomes more complex without a clear north-south pole separation, French said. By the time solar maximum passes and solar minimum arrives, the sun has returned to a dipole, albeit with a flipped polarity. The upcoming switch in polarity will be from the northern to southern magnetic field in the northern hemisphere and vice versa in the southern hemisphere. This will bring it to a similar magnetic orientation to Earth, which also has its southern pointing magnetic field in the northern hemisphere, French explained. What causes the switch in polarity? The reversal is driven by sunspots, magnetically complex regions of the sun's surface that can spawn significant solar events, such as solar flares and coronal mass ejections, CMEs, large blasts of plasma and magnetic field. NASA and NOAA track sunspots to determine and predict the progress of the solar cycle and, ultimately, solar activity. Sunspots are cooler regions on the sun caused by a concentration of magnetic field lines. 
Sunspots are the visible component of active regions, areas of intense and complex magnetic fields on the sun that are the source of solar eruptions. As sunspots emerge close to the equator, they will have an orientation matching the old magnetic field, while sunspots forming closer to the poles will have a magnetic field matching the incoming magnetic orientation, French said. This is called Hale's Law. The magnetic field from active regions makes its way toward the poles and eventually causes the reversal. Solar physicist Todd Hoeksema, director of the Wilcox Solar Observatory at Stanford University. But the exact underlying cause of such a flip in polarity remains mysterious. That gets into the whole solar cycle and wondering what that is. Stanford University solar physicist Phil Scherer previously told Space.com, we still don't have a really self-consistent mathematical description of what's happening. And until you can model it, you don't really understand it. It's hard to really understand it. It really depends on where the magnetic field comes from. Are there going to be many sunspots? And are the sunspots going to contribute to the magnetic field of the pole, or are they going to kind of cancel locally? Huxema said, that question we don't yet know how to answer. What we do know is that the solar magnetic field flip is not instantaneous. It's a gradual transition from a dipole to a complex magnetic field to a reversed dipole over the entire 11 year solar cycle. In short, there is no specific moment in which the sun's poles flip, French said. It's not like the earth where the flip is measured by the migration of the north-south pole. It generally takes a year or two for a complete reversal, but it can vary significantly. For example, the north polar field of solar cycle 24, which ended in December 2019, took nearly five years to reverse, according to the National Solar Observatory. The magnetic field flip is so gradual, you won't even notice when it happens. And no, however dramatic it might sound, it is not the sign of an impending apocalypse. The world will not end tomorrow during solar maximum. The number of sunspots and therefore the amount of solar activity increases, said Jamie Favors, director, space weather program at NASA headquarters in Washington. This increase in activity provides an exciting opportunity to learn about our closest star, but also causes real effects at Earth and throughout our solar system. Solar activity strongly influences conditions in space known as space weather. This can affect satellites and astronauts in space, as well as communications and navigation systems, such as radio and GPS, and power grids on Earth. When the sun is most active, space weather events become more frequent. Solar activity has led to increased aurora visibility, and impacts on satellites and infrastructure in recent months. During May 2024, a barrage of large solar flares and coronal mass ejections, CMEs, launched clouds of charged particles and magnetic fields toward Earth, creating the strongest geomagnetic storm at Earth in two decades, and possibly among the strongest displays of auroras on record in the past 500 years. This announcement doesn't mean that this is the peak of solar activity we'll see this solar cycle, said El Sayed Talat, director of space weather operations at NOAA. While the sun has reached the solar maximum period, the month that solar activity peaks on the sun will not be identified for months or years. Scientists will not be able to determine the exact peak of this solar maximum period for many months because it's only identifiable after they've tracked a consistent decline in solar activity after that peak. However, scientists have identified that the last two years on the sun have been part of this active phase of the solar cycle due to the consistently high number of sunspots during this period. Scientists anticipate that the maximum phase will last another year or so before the sun enters the declining phase, which leads back to solar minimum. Since 1989, the Solar Cycle Prediction Panel, 
an international panel of experts sponsored by NASA and NOAA, has worked together to make their prediction for the next solar cycle. Solar cycles have been tracked by astronomers since Galileo first observed sunspots in the 1600s. Each solar cycle is different. Some cycles peak for larger and shorter amounts of time, and others have smaller peaks that last longer. Solar cycle 25 sunspot activity has slightly exceeded expectations, said Lisa Upton, co-chair of the Solar Cycle Prediction Panel and lead scientist at Southwest Research Institute in San Antonio, Texas. However, despite seeing a few large storms, they aren't larger than what we might expect during the maximum phase of the cycle. The sun did not calm down after these intense solar storms in May. Instead, it continued to emit bursts of M-class and moderate X-class flares, keeping space weather scientists on edge. Then, on October 3rd, it unleashed a colossal X 9.0 flare, the most powerful in seven years from the center of its disk. Within a week, a fierce G4 geomagnetic storm struck Earth, creating breathtaking auroras in unexpected regions and disrupting radio communications globally. All these events signaled one thing, the arrival of the solar maximum. NASA has now confirmed it. Our sun's magnetic field has flipped, officially marking the solar maximum period. But what does this heightened solar activity mean for our planet? How long will this active phase last? And most importantly, could it influence global temperatures and contribute to warming over the coming year? Although the sun appears as a steady ball of light, it undergoes dramatic changes approximately every 11 years, a phenomenon known as the solar cycle. This cycle impacts Earth in numerous ways, including variations in solar activity, magnetism, and appearance. The solar cycle's discovery dates back to the late 1700s when astronomers noticed a peculiar pattern while observing sunspots dark patches on the sun's surface. They realized these sunspots did not appear randomly, but instead fluctuated in number in a recurring 11-year cycle. Following this discovery, astronomers began meticulously documenting solar activity by counting sunspots. As technology advanced, scientists noticed two more elements changing with the solar cycle. The first was the sun's magnetic field. Because the sun is a massive sphere of charged plasma, its magnetic field is constantly shifting. Scientists observe that the sun's magnetic poles reverse with each cycle, its magnetic north becoming south and vice versa. This polarity flip typically occurs around the solar maximum, marking the midpoint of the cycle. Additionally, Overall solar activity, including solar winds, flares, and CMEs, peaks at the maximum and declines at the minimum. These findings mean monitoring solar cycles now involves analyzing sunspot numbers, magnetic polarity shifts, and solar activity levels. When Solar Cycle 25 began in December 2019, it was predicted to be weaker than its predecessor. However, this forecast proved incorrect. Solar cycle 25 has far exceeded expectations, with the average daily sunspot number reaching 299 in August 2024, more than double the projected value and the highest in over two decades. Remarkably, this cycle's peak arrived earlier than anticipated. Initial predictions placed the peak in July 2025, but by January 2024, the NOAA adjusted its forecast, estimating the peak between January and October 2024 with 137 to 173 sunspots. On October 15th, NASA confirmed the solar maximum period had officially begun. This announcement, however, does not mean solar activity has reached its absolute peak. Identifying the exact peak requires months, even years, of observation. For now, scientists expect 
elevated solar activity to persist for about another year before the sun begins its gradual transition back to the solar minimum. During this time, we can anticipate severe geomagnetic storms and stunning auroral displays. Historically, solar storms have left profound marks on Earth. The Carrington event of September 1859 remains the most intense solar storm ever recorded. British astronomer Richard Carrington observed a massive solar flare just hours before a CME struck Earth, triggering an intense geomagnetic storm. Telegraph systems malfunctioned across Europe and North America, with some operators reporting electric shocks. The storm was so powerful that auroras lit up skies as far south as the Caribbean. In May 1921, the infamous New York Railroad storm disrupted railway systems across the U.S. Northeast. More recently, a powerful storm in March 1989 caused a nine-hour blackout in Quebec, Canada, exposing vulnerabilities in modern power grids. In today's technology-reliant world, significant solar events pose even greater risks. In 2022, a geomagnetic storm destroyed 40 newly launched Starlink satellites. The potential for a modern Carrington-class event could result in trillions of dollars in damages globally. Despite this, solar activity during maximum periods offers a surprising benefit, protection against cosmic rays. The sun's intense magnetic field during these times shields Earth and satellites from harmful cosmic radiation. One of the most captivating effects of heightened solar activity is the auroras. When a CME interacts with Earth's magnetic field, it sets off a dazzling chain of events. Charged particles spiral toward the poles, creating breathtaking displays. While green auroras are most common, Rare red auroras, produced by higher altitude interactions, offer an even more spectacular sight. The best places to view these phenomena include Canada, Alaska, and parts of Scandinavia. As we approach the peak of Solar Cycle 25, these mesmerizing displays remind us of our place in a dynamic and ever-changing universe. No A anticipates additional solar and geomagnetic storms during the current solar maximum period, leading to opportunities to spot auroras over the next several months, as well as potential technology impacts. Additionally, though less frequent, scientists often see fairly significant storms during the declining phase of the solar cycle.